Um, so I have decided I'll talk to you about why I converted to uh, trail runners with no waterproof membrane from what I'm used to traveling or hiking with, which were really sturdy hiking boots, which were waterproof. So I've gone from that kind of setup to these lightweight trail runners. I had a choice in this brand to go with one with a membrane or one without one, meaning a waterproof one or one that's not. Uh, so I did a little research and look, I figured not a lot of the time it rains, you know, on my Bibbulmun track hike, I, I think it probably rained maybe one tenth of the time, you know, and when it rained, it bloody rained. But other than that, you know, having the ability to have your feet breathe and dry out and stay dry during the day, you know, helps to prevent blisters and other problems in your feet. Um, and it certainly means that after a day of walking in the wet rain, um, your boots or your shoes will uh, dry out a lot quicker overnight. Uh, so I find that to be a huge advantage. Um, I hiked the overland in March this year and it rained all day one day. My feet, feet were saturated. It, it only took about half an hour to get satched and then walked in a puddle. Um, but uh, yeah, I took my shoes off at the end of the day and um, it was freezing cold. Like it, it was very cold and I put them in the sort of the, uh, the vestibule of my tent and uh you know i'm surprisingly they actually got quite dry they weren't completely dry but i put on some dry socks put them in my shoe and i didn't even notice that my shoes were wet um because they were mostly dry but you know still damp it was very cold and uh yeah i just set off and uh, didn't even notice that they were sort of a little bit damp um because they weren't obviously wet enough to saturate my socks through so yeah, they dried as I sort of was hiking that day. Whereas if you had a membrane, if it was wet on the inside, it would still be wet on the inside. The dry might, uh, the outer layer might dry, but you still, with that membrane, it just completely blocks the inside of the shoe drying out, which is what you want to be dry. So you've got a comfortable dry foot that's not gonna get sweaty, which is the main cause of blisters. On that note, um, when I've had boots, I have always had problems with blisters. Um, usually I'd get just little hot spots in the back of my ankle um, and then I'd start getting little blisters on my pinky toe but after 56 days of hiking on the Bibbulmun those blisters basically were everywhere they were underneath my foot they were in between just about every toe and every night you know I had to take off all my bandaging and dry it out and in the morning it took me I reckon about 15 to 20 minutes to re-bandage up every toe and every uh, sort of dressing over my over my blisters because it was that bad um, and those boots were worn in there was nothing wrong with them but I'd only done you know smaller hikes with them where it wasn't so much of a problem but prolonged hikes you know sweating and getting wet not thoroughly drying in the boots you know my feet just couldn't really take it they just kept getting worse and worse and by the end of the trip you know like they weren't going to get better there was nothing you could do to get them better um, even hiking in the hot weather I don't think they would have got better because then my foot would have sweat so much inside of them. So um, yeah, I don't know if you can tell I'm really against boots because now since I've had these trail runners I've not had a single blister or hot spot um, and yeah that's that's like a huge 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 thing for me. So yes that's why I recommend um, you know trail runners. Um, some people are concerned about the support for your ankle I feel that when you're walking in trail runners, because they're slightly softer base, they're not as hard and sturdy, um, they sort of form around rocks and surfaces a lot easier, which I find when you're rock scrambling, for example, when I went up Mount Ossa, I literally just leaping from rock to rock and I had 100% confidence that my shoes would grip to them and uh, I found it very easy to get up. Whereas I um, was rock scrambling before I did um, St. Mary's Peak um, in the Flinders and also, you know, various hill climbs on the Bibbulmun. And I, I just was nowhere near as confident climbing and rock scrambling as I have, you know, as I am now with these uh, trail runners. And I believe 100% that the trail runners have sort of given me that ability and that confidence um, because they're just, like, they just form to things better. 
Um, and on that note, I have, you know, I've never had ankle problems before, um, but I feel that I've had some more scary sort of moments where I thought I might have rolled my ankle or hurt it in boots um, in comparison to my trail runners. And I honestly, I can't explain the science or the theory behind that. I think having a the, the base of your shoe to be as conforming to the ground as possible, I think uh, is going to be more advantageous um, than having a hard base that doesn't really want to conform and it just wants to stay flat and you know, you're not gripping as well. Um, so yeah, I think there's a huge benefit to that with the trail runners in that uh, way. Um, sorry, I'm rambling a little bit, but that's just my opinion. Again, some people absolutely swear by boots. I think it's just a common uh, misconception that boots are going to give you more ankle support, which I think, um, you know, I find trail runners actually support your ankle better because you can naturally sort of move and form your foot around obstacles and um, sort of getting into the situation where your ankles bend in all strange ang angles, usually because of a slip or by misplacing your feet. Um, you know, that's when you usually cause injury to your ankle. Whereas these trail runners, you're just more confident on your feet. It grips a lot better. And um, I find that the chances or the occurrences of those sort of slips and little hiccups occur a whole le lot less. So maybe I should say, um, it's more so about reducing the amount of times you suscept your ankle to times when it twists and bends at odd angles. I think that might be a more accurate thing to say. Well, I thought I'd just sort of sign off real quick here. Um, so I'd like to say thanks for watching uh, my videos. Um, if you do uh, enjoy them, please hit the like button below um, and subscribe if you want to be updated. Uh, put the little bell next to it. I think uh, you'll be notified when I release new videos. There'll be more to come. Thank you.